Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Thanks so much. Um, and as you probably guessed from the title today, I'm gonna to be talking about squat tips um, and squat form and things that'll help you to improve your squat. And if you want to get heavier with it, then this will be ideal for you. So for me, um, I've been squatting for pretty much like it was one of the first major compound lifts that I learned. Um, when I first started lifting weights, um, it's the one where everyone thinks to grow your glutes. And whilst it is a good glute exercise, it is a quad dominant exercise. So it's more likely to grow your quads um, than anything else as it's not as posterior chain focused, it's anterior chain. So that's the front. Uh, your posterior chain is the back. That doesn't mean to say it's not a good glute exercise though. So just to keep that in mind, but a lot of people think I'm going to grow my booty, you're going to do loads and loads of squats. It doesn't work like that. Um, but anyways, uh, when I first started lifting, um, obviously I just got into that sort of ego lifting frame of mind, was just lifting and not going very deep. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, again, that was then another mindset I went into that I had to go as deep as possible every time. But um, squat just below your knee. So if I show you like a squat where you just come in to here, just past the bend in your knee is actually one of the best ones for your glutes um, but then a full range of motion squat will contract more quads but will obviously still recruit the glutes so there's not actually a wrong way but you do want to be getting um, a good amount of depth with your squats definitely below the knee but you don't have to go all the way down and um, it's also important to know with squats that this your depth um, will depend on your mobility. So I would definitely recommend doing more mobility exercises um, if this is something you struggle with, but also taking into mind your body shape and frame. So people with longer legs uh, who are taller, I see I've got quite short legs, uh, so I can get quite deep, but people with longer legs, and I notice this in my clients, can't get as deep. Um, your torso will also be affected by this if you've got quite a long torso or a shorter torso and um, because when you do squat down obviously your torso will come forward and so slightly whilst you are keeping your chest up and um, so that can affect it as well uh, but mobility exercises can help and um, so active stretches um, you know before you squat i definitely recommend and before you do any workout i would recommend and then if you really are wanting to improve your mobility they are possibly something that you could include a bit more of on your rest days as part of an active rest day and um, i could do another video on that if that would be helpful please let us know below so yeah just a few things before i start i'm going to show you how to set up a barbell squat on the rack and then go through some key tips with you and then show you how I would do that. I will be keeping this quite a lightweight um, just for demonstration purposes. Just realised I went off on a right tangent there because I was talking about my squat and saying about ego lifting and stuff. So it was only sort of last year, like yeah just over a year ago, maybe two years ago, that um, I really started focusing on working on my squat. Prior to this when I've been, I've been lifting for like seven, eight years now but lifting more seriously and consistently for the last three or four so about just over a year, two ago, um, I really started, as I say, focusing on my squat and just like stripping back the weight because when I first started lifting, it was just like heavier, heavier, heavier. And I do actually have um, slight muscle imbalances because of this now, because I wasn't focusing on my form and I wasn't focusing on my muscle connection. Um, and it's really important to remember those things because they are more important than weight. Because if you're just shifting the weight, um, you might not be working the muscles that you want to work. Um, whereas I find that if I go lighter, so it's still a challenge in weight. Um, you know, I'm really thinking about the muscles that I'm using, got the right muscles engaged um, and focusing on that. Um, I do find it's much better for results than just trying to push any weight. And also you don't just want to be pushing a really heavy weight and end up injuring yourself. Another thing as well for squats is I get asked quite a lot about is using a lifting belt. I would say anything over 70% of your one rep max, um, I would use it. If you don't know what this is, um, again, I would just as you're getting heavier, it might be something you want to incorporate and see. But you want to be trying, again, 
to use that mind muscle connection to engage your core um, and also maybe have a spotter instead but if you do feel like you want that extra support on your back and your core I don't think that there's anything wrong with using a lifting belt I do think they get a bit of a bad name but this is if you're going up really really heavy which is not something I would recommend to do straight away is to build it up so as I say like sort of the start of last year I like strip my weight right back on my squats and work more on my mobility so I wasn't quite getting the depth again I was just going past that point of like just below the bend in your knees which as I mentioned isn't a bad squat form it's still you know a, a good squat to do but I wanted to really work on getting nice and deep focusing on my tempo and again getting better my muscle connection so I stripped it right back and went into sort of strength rep range so I'd start with lighter warm-up sets and slowly build that up um, to five sets of three um, at as heavy a weight as I could possibly go. So I did this with a squat, uh, a squat, <laughs> also a squat, but a spotter um, on this, which did help us feel more comfortable. So definitely something I'd recommend if it's possible for you. But then again, with the squat rack, I can show you how to put it inside of the rack if that is going to make you feel more comfortable and how to set up the safety bars and um, so if you feel like you're going to fail then that is there to support and help you so what i'll do is as i said i'll show you how to set up a squat on the rack i'm just going to use like a lightweight and then i'll talk through some tips and then show you an example so when setting up on the rack i'll show you inside of the cage just so then for the safety bars and then i'll show you around a bit closer but i just want to make sure i've got the full uh, back in so that you can see so to adjust these I would always say to get them around shoulder height so that's a little bit too high for me so you think about lifting the bar off here put it on my tiptoes it's not a bad height but maybe just for more comfort I'll draw down one so I'm going to put it inside the rack for now so just line those up I want to put one down and twist that to lift it off now obviously every squat rack is different but typically you normally twist pull out and then you'll put it back in twist down and then just the same on the other side to get those matched up and then just check that they're right so then you want to put the barbell inside of the rack so this is just again if you want to use the safety bars you can do this on the outside and just be careful about that and then flip it up you can get somebody to give you a hand with this if you feel like the barbell is too um heavy for you, I would just ask somebody in the gym, like people will be more than happy to help me, even if you just ask somebody that works there, if you don't feel comfortable asking anyone around, but I mean I feel like from working um, in a gym and being a gym member, a lot of the time if people see you and you look a bit nervous and not sure, someone's likely to come up to you and just ask if you're okay, but the staff would always be willing to help if you feel like you need it. So then next we're going to put the plates on each side and secure them with a safety clip and make sure you put the safety clips on you don't want the plates to fall off, to hurt yourself, to hurt anybody else in the gym. So as I say I'm just using some lighter weights just for demonstration purposes. What you can do as well is do a warm up set with just the barbell and um, just to help you um, get in to the rhythm of it and get into the movement patterns. Um, so the clips, I just use them in any clips. Good, but just make sure that they're nice and secure and that the plate is fully to the end of the barbell. So one thing as well that I want to mention about squatting is not to use the barbell pad because this could prevent the barbell sitting in the right place um, and you want it to be again in the correct place so that your form is all good and you've got the right mind muscle connection, right muscles working and the barbell pad I know it can feel uncomfortable but it's just getting used to it so again this will be a tip that I'll go over um, once we get going so I'll show you how to set up the safety bars as well I think these are about the right height but they're very similar to the um, ones for the barbell so again you just sort of twist and pull this right out so for me, I would just have that around that height that's already set up. So if you just even do a body weight example, squats will go down. So at least if you know if that's going to fall, you can just roll that off the back. It's going to catch on there and then you can stand up. So you're going to be pushing it back off if you feel like you're going to fail. But as I say, if you don't feel comfortable alone, I wouldn't go too heavy. Um, you know, I would just stick with lighter weights and higher reps and then it's something that you can slowly build up to. You don't even need to necessarily be adding weight every week. And I know that obviously I mentioned before, I did a rep range of working up to five 
reps, not three sets of five reps, um, but that's not necessarily a rep range I have to work up to, it was just something that I had uh, a goal of last year. Um, so, you know, just maybe don't go too heavy if you don't feel comfortable alone, if you haven't got a training partner and a spotter. But if you do feel like you've gone a bit too heavy still, just think about pushing it back off and the safety bars will catch that for you. Just look at Wesley sat there. How cute. <laughs> You're cute, babes. <laughs> so now the barbell's set up and in position and we are ready to squat. So as I said, you could do one bodyweight set and a warm-up set with just the barbell and then add your first plates on. So I've put 10s on, but you could even just start with fives and then add on some 2.5s and then work up to 10. So work up like this. So you might want to start with a really high rep range of maybe, well, let's say really high. I would normally start with about 10 to 12. You don't want to go too high. Um, I wouldn't probably go any higher than 15 reps just because you don't want to exhaust yourself when you're adding the weight and again you don't even have to do it this way but i would always recommend doing a warm-up set before any big lift like this again just to get your um body ready use of the movement patterns and then get your sort of mind muscle connection engaged and going before you then add the weight um so i'll show you this example so what, what you're going to do is walk up with the barbell you're going to go under the rack so that the barbell sits just above your shoulder blade. So you can do high or low bar, whichever is best for you. I do a slightly more uh, high bar. So you want to have your shoulder blades back and then think about creating a shelf with your shoulder blades. Okay, so again, when you walk over to the barbell and you're taking the barbell off, you want to do it with intent. You don't just want to lift it off. You want to actually think, right, okay, I'm ready to go. So before you do that, get yourself into position. Make sure you're in about the center. Do a nice deep breath in. And then as you're braced, so Breathe in, brace your core, and as you brace, then lift it off and exhale. Okay, so you're doing that with intent, you're ready to go, and then get your feet in a position. And then again, before you start to squat down, take a deep breath in, brace that core, slowly move down, really use that mind-muscle connection, and then stand back up, and then exhale. Okay, so it's important that you take that deep breath in, keep that core nice and braced, and then exhale when you fully stood up so not as you're standing back up not as you're going down as you stand up but this can take some getting used to and again i would do it with your warm-up sets to get your body used to it and um, this just in help uh, this just helps sorry to steady it and keep your core nice and tight and then again before you move deep breath in and go back down again so try not to rush through the reps again this also makes you slow down but that breathing really does help to keep you nice and steady to keep you feeling stronger and it's something that i definitely um, what's the word I'm looking for? That I basically just didn't use it and sort of almost like overlooked it, whereas it's actually changed the game for my squatting and did help us to get up to that higher weight. So I'll show you an example of that and then you should be able to hear my breathing on it and hopefully that helps. So I'll do two reps just to show you um, what I've just went through. Walk over to the bar with intent, you want to have your hands same distance apart so normally what I do is where it goes to the sort of rough edge is I put my thumb at the end of that on each side so then my hands are an equal distance apart okay, then I'm going to go under the barbell and try and get this middle bit uh, where my spine is so under so you've got your shoulder blades back you create a nice shelf with your shoulder blades I'm going to take a deep breath in off the rack breathe out and I'm going to get my feet in the position again, but every time this is what you're doing, I'm just going to go with a sort of hip width apart, toes facing forward. So deep breath in, down and up. I'll show you two example reps. So and then we wrap. So hopefully that's explained um, you know, clearly enough and then the example showed that too. And it, you know, as I said, it's just slowly building it up, progressively overloading each week, which is why it's so important to have a programme with progressive overload um, so that each week you can slowly build on that, whether it's you know, you're staying at the same sort of work and set weight um, and increasing your reps, slowing down that tempo um, or increasing the weight ever so slightly each week. And you can even add a pause at the bottom, things like that, so you create more time and attention. That is still a really good way 
to progress. And um, it seems like, you know, because for me it was very big, again, mindset, mental thing to strip the weight right back and start again. Because I was like, well, I can squat, you know, like 70 kilos. And um, so it seemed like a regression, whereas actually, like, think of the bigger picture. Um, in any fitness journey, think of the bigger picture, whether you've got a fat loss goal, a weight gain goal, think about the end goal. Um, you know, you, you might just want those quick, quick results, but thinking about the bigger picture is so important. And me stripping back that weight, working on my form, working on my tempo, all these different things, that mind-muscle connection, things that are really important. I saw significant strength increases um, and actually better, like, physical aesthetic results from this. Um, as I say, like, I really, really believe in it. It's been proven, like, your form and your mind-muscle connection are way more important than the weight so it would be better to do a lighter weight and be using the right muscles and you'll actually see much better results from that so if this is you and you know you feel a bit like oh, it's like regressing that you go feel like you're going backwards you know you actually will eventually like as i say the bigger picture can yield much greater results and it definitely has for me which is why i wanted to share the tips that really changed the game for me on this one any questions about anything that i went over please pop it in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. I'd be happy to do, um, as I say, a video on some mobility exercises that also help with my squatting um, or anything else that you think that might be helpful to help with a squat exercise or any other exercises that you feel like you're struggling with. Um, please let us know. I'd be more than happy to do some more form videos like this and fully like do a walkthrough and a talk through um, again. And then also when you finish, must mention to re-rack the weights, put them back. <laughs> I I am actually like in my own gym and I will put them away obviously um but that's why but just remember to re-rack your weights for the next person like the next person might not be as strong as you and be unable to get them off and it might put them off using that squat rack or doing that weight that exercise and you know just thinking about other people in the gym and being mindful of that and obviously just gym owners as a gym owner myself uh you know you want everyone to put everything away and just keeps um the equipment um what's like well kept that's the word i'm so tired today i feel like i can't get the words but yeah uh, so remember to re-rack as well but any questions please let us know please like this video um if it's been helpful and subscribe if you haven't already and yeah we'll see you on the next one